Hello, uh, let's start with exercise one. A homogeneous rod of weight mg and length 2L leans against the wall through a horizontal cable as shown below. Calculate the components of the reaction R prime and the tension T. Here we have a string. In terms of alpha h, h is this, this distance, l, m, and g. So it can be done by Newton's law, but uh, let's start with D'Alembert's principle, which is the new method in the first lesson. D'Alembert's principle says that the sum of the dot products of the applied forces minus lineal momentum dot with the virtual displacements is equal to zero. So the first thing we should notice is that this is an static problem or a static system and then p dot equals zero because there is no motion here so we can delete p dot and we define applied forces, the forces that are not the binding forces, or another way to say it, the binding force. The applied forces here are the weights, mg, and t. And the reaction forces, or the constraining uh, forces, are r prime and r. By the way, this angle is alpha. The other important thing is to know what's the meaning of this index. In this case, this index has to do with the points where the forces are applied. In this case, we have two points. This point, which we can call 1, for example, this point, and this other point, 2, and then I runs from 1 to 2, the applied forces. So the D'Alembert's principle can be written more explicitly like this. 0 minus mg dot product virtual displacement of R1, one, one, uh, meaning this point, plus minus t comma 0 dot product virtual displacement of the point 2, this point, equals 0. So what is the definition of this virtual displacement and this other virtual displacement? Well, in order to calculate these variations, uh, notice that you must fix t, the time. Uh, the only thing you can do is set possible configurations compatible with the geometry of the system. In this case, it corresponds to a different mm, values of alpha because you can have this situation or this another situation and the only difference is the value of this angle. So the parameter that rules uh, the game is alpha. So once you have the parameter then you can say that in this case the definition of this virtual displacement is just the partial derivative of R1 with respect to alpha times variation of alpha. And the same thing for R2. If you have uh, two parameters, then the definition would be the partial derivative with respect to alpha plus the partial derivative with respect to beta, for, for instance, the other parameter. But in this case, we have only one parameter, alpha, so it simplifies the, the problem in our case. Let's calculate first R2, and due to the fact that R2 is a position vector, we need origin of our coordinate system. So we can set that this is 0, 0. So in this case, R2 will be uh, x, for example, we can call this distance x, comma, 0. But remember, we need to express our expressions as a function of alpha, h, l, m, or g. So, doing some trigonometrics, if this is alpha, this is h, and this is x, tangent alpha is equal to x divided by h, so x equals h tangent alpha, 
So we substitute x by h tangent alpha comma zero. Okay, let's calculate R1. Let me interchange the expressions, the position of the, the expressions. So R1 will be R2 plus this vector. So if this angle is alpha, then it's also true that this angle is also alpha. This vector has norm L because it's the distance between 1 and 2. So we can put here L. And now uh, the horizontal component has to do with sine, sine alpha. So minus sine alpha, comma, this segment, cosine alpha. Sorry, here because we're calculating R1, which is R2 plus a little extra piece, sorry. So adding them, uh, we obtain, uh, let's see, H tangent alpha plus minus L sine alpha comma zero plus uh, L cosine alpha. And that's it. So let's calculate the derivatives. Delta R1 will be H1 plus tangent square alpha minus L cosine alpha minus L sine alpha times delta alpha. And the variation R of R2 equals H1 plus tangent square alpha comma zero delta alpha okay so we we've got uh, all the pieces so let's substitute here we will have zero in the x component so all this doesn't appear so we will have minus mg times all this minus minus is plus l sine alpha plus zero uh, here times whatever is in here is zero. So we will have minus t times the x component h1 plus tangent square alpha equals, uh, sorry, equals zero. E all these times delta alpha, this delta alpha. Since delta alpha is different from zero, we can deduce from this condition that all this must be equal to zero. Now we can isolate T from this equation and obtain MLG divided by H sine alpha divided by one plus tangent square alpha. If you want to express this tangent as a function of sine and, and cosine, then another way to express uh, this equation is like this sine alpha cosine square alpha and this is t but the exercise asks us uh, to calculate r prime but r prime doesn't appear in this equation so what do we do well now we will use i don't know how can i call it but maybe we can call it relaxed virtual work i must say that when p dot disappears, then this principle is called virtual work, virtual work principle. It's only, I insist, it's only a name when p dot equals zero. Now I'm adding relaxed a virtual work. What it means is if you relax the constraints or if you prefer instead of relax change, then uh, the binding forces can appear in our equation. The reason why R prime and R doesn't appear in this equation is because when you change alpha, the new position of the road is in such a way that R prime and the virtual displacement of this point are orthogonal. Let's see how it works and an interesting method to calculate R prime. Let's delete all this stuff. Let's start 
from scratch. Let's see. This is R prime. This is mg, r, and g. Now, let's suppose that we fixed this point and decide to rotate the road a little bit in that direction. Now, if we call this uh, point 1, for example, and this uh, point 3, then the change of the constraints has to do with the fact that we can rotate this road and this road mustn't be against the wall anymore. This is what I meant to change or relax the constraints. So let's see that uh, this configuration or this change in the constraining forces will permit us to find our prime. It's interesting also to set this point as the new origin. Let's draw in red. Let's make the rotation matrix. Uh, I hope you remember that the rotation matrix in 2D, in two dimensions, is cosine theta minus sine theta sine theta cosine theta. But this rotation is in this sense, or in this direction, counterclockwise. But we need clockwise. Uh, so the only thing we must do is change this minus and put a minus here. Okay, the next thing we want to do is to consider only infinitesimal rotations, which means infinitesimal value of theta. We can call um, epsilon saying that epsilon squared equals zero. This is another equivalent way to, to say that epsilon is an infinitesimal number. So knowing that cosine epsilon equals 1 and sine epsilon equals epsilon, then we can change cosine theta or cosine epsilon by 1, also in here, and sine, sine epsilon epsilon, and here minus epsilon. So this matrix is a rotation, an infinitesimal rotation matrix clockwise. Good. Now, in order to calculate the variation of R1, for example, we can calculate this quantity multiplying the infinitesimal rotation matrix times R1. I hope uh, you agree with me. If you have any questions or something like that, you can write in the forum, um, email me in order to solve uh, the doubts or questions or, or whatever. So R is 1 epsilon minus epsilon 1 and r1 considering the origin is in here is let's see this is alpha this is alpha so r1 is minus l sine alpha and l cosine alpha so we finally obtain let's see 1 times this l sine alpha plus epsilon l cosine alpha and epsilon l sine alpha plus l cosine alpha. Sorry, this is the new position r1 prime, for example. And if you consider r1 prime a vector as a function of epsilon, then we can define r1, so the variation of this vector, like this. The partial derivative of r1 prime epsilon with respect to epsilon. So looking at this, we have L cosine alpha and L sine alpha. So let's write down this result. This is L cosine alpha, L sine alpha. Let's compute now the case two. Ah, sorry, it's 3, the, this point, sorry. So this vector, R3, is this vector. The y component is h. And let's see. Let's remember, this is h, this is alpha. So uh, tangent alpha equals this magnitude, x, divided by h. So x equals h tangent alpha so it points 
to the left. Okay, so we will have minus h tangent alpha plus epsilon h and plus epsilon h tangent alpha plus h and the derivative with respect to epsilon is h and h tangent of alpha. So the variation of R3 will be h h tangent alpha. Ah, and the virtual displacement of this point is zero because this point is the center of the rotation. So the terms that, that will appear in the equation has to do with r prime and mg. So let's see r prime dot variation of r3 plus 0 minus mg variation of r1 equals 0. r prime, uh, let's see, this is alpha and this is 90 degree so this is alpha so r prime is r prime cosine alpha sine alpha let's let's write down r prime cosine alpha sine alpha dot product uh, delta r3 uh, which is h 1 comma tangent alpha plus 0, minus mg and delta r1 which is l cosine alpha l sine alpha ah, by the way this equation is incomplete must be multiplied by epsilon of course because this is a an, an infinite, infinitesimal variation sorry all this thing must be multiplied by epsilon equals zero okay so we will have r prime cosine alpha times h this thing times this thing plus r prime sine alpha times tangent alpha plus and zero times this zero minus mg l sine alpha and epsilon is different from zero like before so all this thing is zero sorry we have h here because r prime times sine alpha times h times uh, tangent alpha sorry here we have an h so we can isolate r prime and we obtain m g l divided by h sine alpha and cosine alpha so if you want to calculate the binding forces then you must relax uh, the constraint or change the constraints an interesting exercise you can do at home is to consider this virtual displacement a vertical displacement the same thing in this point and all the points if you consider this situation, then you will obtain the other constraining force or the reaction force R. It's very interesting that you consider this at home. And please, if, if you have uh, questions or doubts or whatever, uh, you can email me. We will talk friendly. Okay, see you in class or virtually or uh, we will decide the best thing uh, you consider. Thank you very much for watching this video and see you soon.